Hey everyone, it's John here. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at using the filter function to filter based on a list of values. So first I'm gonna show you how the filter function normally works with multiple criteria. And then I'm gonna show you three ways that you can build your criteria based on a list of values instead. Let's take a look. First up, let's take a look at using the filter function and creating a filter criteria in the normal way. So here we've got a list of employees and if we wanna filter this based on a department value, then we can use the filter function with that. And so our criteria might be something like our department is equal to some value. So first let's try IT. And so that criteria is going to create an array of true and false values. So true where we have the IT department and false otherwise. And we can use this criteria with a filter function. Now, if we wanna to add to this criteria, so suppose we wanna filter on either IT department or sales department, then what we can do is we can add to this criteria and so here, instead of IT, let's change this to sales. And now what we're gonna get is an array of ones and zeros, where one is the either the value IT or sales, and we have a zero otherwise. And we can still use this as the criteria in our filter function. So here we can filter our employee data based on those two criteria, either IT or sales department. And when we press enter, we get all the rows for either our IT or sales department. Now, if we want to add a third criteria, then we're gonna have to edit our formula and add on a third criteria like that. And so here, maybe we wanna add in HR department and when we press enter, we now have all the IT, HR, and sales department values in our results. But this is not going to be a very flexible way to build our criteria, as each time we wanna add a department, we're going to have to modify our filter formula criteria. So instead, we're gonna take a look at three different ways that we can create these filter criteria based on a list of values and this way, when we add values into our list, our filter is going to return those correct items. First up, let's take a look at using the reduce function to build our criteria for our filter function. So the reduce function is going to allow us to loop through an array of values and then perform some calculation for each value in the array. So here we're gonna loop through this array here of department values. And then the reduce function is going to perform a calculation for our department IT and our department marketing in this case. And as we add new values into this list, then it's going to perform those calculations as well. So the reduce function takes an initial value and here our initial value is gonna be false. And the array that our reduce function is gonna loop through is gonna be this list of departments. And the calculation we're gonna do is a lambda, and the lambda requires two parameters, an accumulator value, and a current value. So here that's gonna be A and V. And then our calculation for our lambda is going to be our criteria that our department column is equal to the current value, so V for our current value parameter. And then we're going to add our previous result, the accumulator value. And when we press enter, we get an array of ones and zeros. And you can see that we get a one whenever we have a department that's inside of our list here. So IT or marketing in this case, here we've got marketing and that corresponds to a one from our reduce function. And you can see that as we add items into our table here. So now financing is in this table. And now our 
finance department values also get a one in our reduce function results. So we can use this as the criteria in our filter now. And so we're gonna filter our employees table again with the criteria produced from our reduce function. And now that's going to give us our filtered results. And in this case, we've got all the IT, marketing and finance departments. And as we add values into this table, then our filter function returns those as well. The next method we're gonna take a look at for building our filter criteria using a list is with the XLOOKUP function. So if we use the XLOOKUP function on one of our values in our table and look in our list of items that we want to include in our filter results and return those same values. Then it's gonna give us a single result. So in this case, we're looking up the IT department and it is in our list of desired values. And so we get IT, but we can actually, instead of looking up a single value, look up the entire column of values and press enter and we get an array of either IT or marketing. And whenever a value is not in our list here, we get an NA value. And so we can use that to build our filter criteria. So if we use the isNA function, then that's gonna return a false if we don't have an NA value and a true if we do have an NA value. So in other words, if our department is not in this list here, then we get a true value. Now that's the opposite of what we want for our filter criteria. So we're gonna reverse that with the not function. And now whenever our department is appearing in this list here, we get a true value and a false value otherwise, and we can use this as our filter criteria now. So again, we're gonna filter our employee table based on this criteria here. And when we press enter now, we've got all of the IT and marketing values from our table. And if we add items into this list here, so let's add HR into our department table here, then our filter function is going to now return that as well. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at using the regex test function to create our filter criteria based on our list of values. So the regex test function in Excel allows us to check whether a text string matches a specified regular expression pattern, and it's gonna return true if there's a match and false otherwise. And in this case, the regex pattern that we're gonna use is going to give us an exact match based on a list. So here, this regex pattern is going to return a true if we have either IT or marketing as our department. And what we can actually do is build this regex pattern based on our list. So here, this is just a hard-coded value. But we can build this pipe character separated list using the text join function. So text join allows us to join an array of values based on a delimiter. So the delimiter is going to be the pipe character. And here we're gonna ignore any empty cells that might be in our list. And the values we're going to join together are in our department list here. And now you can see that we've got the exact same pattern here, but now if we add values into our list then our regex pattern is going to update accordingly. And now we can use the regex test function on our column of department values here with our regex pattern. 
and the regex test function also allows us to either perform this as a case sensitive match or insensitive. Here we're going to choose insensitive. And this returns true and false values. So we get a true when our department is in this list here, or in other words, in our regex pattern, and then false if the department is not in our list. And now we can use this as our filter criteria for filtering our employees. And we're going to use our regex test as the criteria. And now we've got all the, the IT, marketing, and finance rows from our filter function. And again, if we add values into this, then they're going to get returned by our filter function now. As you can see, that, that also gets added into our pattern. And this pattern is used as our filter criteria. So there you go, that's three different ways that you can use the filter function to filter based on a list of values instead of manually setting up each filter criteria. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video and we'll see you in the next one.